Hey folks, Mike here today with some thoughts here on Dirt 5. So as you would have seen in the last four weeks, I've done videos on some of the newer Need for Speed games, and I figured now that I'm kind of done with those, uh, why not take advantage of Dirt 5? It is another Game Pass game that landed recently, and it's a pretty fun game. Uh, I've always enjoyed the Codemaster games in general. Dirt 5 is their more casual off-road racing game. If you want more proper simulation, you want to look at uh, Dirt Rally. Both the games can coexist. They both kind of have different takes on on what they're trying to do. And so, yeah, there's definitely room for, for both of them. Uh, instead of trying to split the difference and you know compromise <laughs> both of the experiences, they really split them out, which is great. Uh, so, yeah, let's hop into this event here. There are a handful of different events, uh, types in the game. There's a couple different vehicle groups as well. Uh, sometimes you can mix and match. Uh, we'll go through the events later and we'll kind of see. Um, yeah, performance has been generally pretty good. I'm running this maxed out on a 1080 Ti. I average around 60 frames. So you may... Uh, I'm also running on 2K resolution, so 2560 by 1440. Uh, the reason I bring that up is there's definitely moments where the frame rate goes below 60. Uh, because I'm on a decent monitor, I don't notice it. So, you know, because it doesn't dip low enough to be a problem. Because uh, the monitor just kind of compensates, right? Uh, however, I'm saying this because in the recording, you'll probably notice uh, moments where it might get a little bit framey or inconsistent or whatever. Uh, it is what it is. I don't notice it. It's super smooth for me, but yeah, if you guys may notice it. Uh, but like I said, it's only 60 frames. It's not you know, 120. I could definitely go much higher if I wanted, but it's a casual game, so I don't see the need to make it super responsive. And that sucks. <laughs> Hitting a building like that. Uh, yeah, so for the sake of this video, we've got different camera angles, like bumper cam, hood cam, the hood is still there, the kind of zoomed in cockpit view and the driver side, or driver view. I think it plays pretty well. I'm playing with uh, an Xbox controller. That's one of the nice things about Dirt Rally is, yeah, it really is one of those games you could just fire up, grab the controller, and play a couple races, and that's about it, right? There's, there's not a lot of, like, there's no tuning, there's no customization, it's just choose an event and go, um, which, that's totally fine, that's one way to, to do, uh, a campaign game, and for, for it to be more of a casual game, they've really leaned into that, right? Because I, I seem to remember the older... Uh, I only played Dirt 1 and 2, and I seem to remember those games being having a little bit more to them, uh, in terms of, like, customizing, maybe, maybe tuning and things like that, but... I don't know. Uh, this is not a particularly difficult game unless you happen to crash out <laughs> like I did. Uh, in which case then, yeah, obviously winning is going to be uh, quite difficult. Um, I am playing this on the highest difficulty with no assists other than low ABS, I believe. I'll show you guys that in the options. Settings. <laughs> Hold on, dude. Hold uh -oh. on. Okay, stop. All right. 
What you're telling me is that Peter, aka Yeah, this is probably Slapchat, quieter for you, and you, you do see the um, went from the YouTube's to subti the subtitles down this there. This brave dude got freaking scared. Yeah, by very a hard. Come on, guys. I mean, I oh, yeah, that's right. I'm running automatic and low. Squirrel, though, James. I mean, you guys weren't there. <laughs> yeah, they, they <laughs> I mean, are scary. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes they, you know, they're rats with bushy tails. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 time to get serious. All right, let's bring it down. This is what. Okay. Student IDs rally cars. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a game that I play with mostly throttle, <laughs> a little bit of handbrake, and the occasional um, uh, forget that. Name. Yeah, handbrake and the occasional actual brake. So it's like a one one bun game <laughs> almost. Uh, I'm not. I don't break very much. You don't have to. So it, it really is. When I say it's casual, it really is that kind of game where. Yeah, there's. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, difficulty wise, I actually try to race on very easy to see the difference. And there's a really wide range of adjustment. Uh, very easy is. Three to five seconds a lap slower if you're doing laps. So like, the AI is way easier. Um, having said that, very hard is not particularly hard. There's a couple of events where the, the real difficulty wasn't the fact that the AI was you know, that much faster. Did I, did I jump over there? Did I? That's cool. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, the the real difficulty I've run into is literally that the AI has like a f faster straight line car. So even though I could get ahead of them in corners, they catch right up by the end of the straight to the next corner. And in at least one or two events I had done, the uh, finish line is at the end of a fairly long straight, and I literally like I can't do anything in that case, so, at least on very hard, uh, yeah, it, not winning is not because it's very hard, but it really is because those cars are just faster. Um, so if I buy it, which in this case is the reason why I'm using the uh, Mitsubishi here, uh, this car is much faster. At the cost, oh, well, actually this one handles pretty well um, with the rally raid vehicles. One of the the one I've switched to is faster at the cost of handling. It's a bit harder to handle, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I can make up for the handling. I can't make up for the lack of speed, so it's a trade-off I'm willing to make. Uh, but again, if you if you bump the difficulty down, the cars do run a bit slower, and so. You want to be a problem. Uh, yeah, you can probably notice I'm not doing super well in terms of uh, racing cleanly and all that. And I'm doing fine. Uh, not afraid. We'll get by this guy before the end. We just need to find. Oh boy. Nice place to overtake. So you may or may not have noticed that time of day does transition a little bit. Um, so I've noticed that in a couple of events, they do vary the time of day a little bit. Uh, but a lot of the events straight up have like a day or a night version, which is kind of interesting. Um, I found that to be pretty neat. Uh, you know, generally not a problem. Nighttime is dark, it's a little hard to see. but. They do the smart thing here and put the, they put markers everywhere, so you can definitely see at night, even though it's pitch black, like those arrows pop out, they're basically illuminated. Um, on other tracks, they also have little, little things scattered around uh, to let you know, hey, there's maybe a, 
an obstacle or just like the side of the track like protrudes or intrudes in a bit or whatever. Yeah, it's You're starting to get a profile it's a fun game. The overtake. They've been past folks left, right, and center. I get it, mm -hmm. man. Stay out of the way. So yeah, there's different points at the end here. You get your XP, you get your reputation, you get your dirt dollars, which is what you use to buy cars, and some of the livery bits. So I've unlocked different livery stuff and textures and stickers. Um, some of your profile picture thingy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that as well has some various unlocks. So yeah, that's that's career in the, for the most part. Uh, if we look through here, uh, there's modern rally cars, the um, the cross raid stuff you saw. Formula off road is a different class of vehicle. So this is one of those or there's only a single vehicle option. You can't buy anything else. Um, this is the rock crawler. So again, only one option here. There's also, is this a dirt track? Yeah, this, or yeah, the sprint, sprint cars, there we go. So yeah. There's a couple, like Unlimited, I haven't played a, an event with Unlimited cards yet. If we back out to Arcade, I could probably choose that. So, you know, each of the... I've done all the locations already. Um, there's an okay variety, not a ton of them. The tracks themselves seem to vary a little bit. There might actually be multiple tracks on each location depending on, on what you have uh, in terms of vehicle. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's see. 80s, 90s rally, classic. Okay, so I've only seen one of those, I believe. So I've seen the cross raid uh, formula, yeah. Pre-runners, I don't remember. Rally Cross, I don't believe I've seen that. Let's look at Unlimited. So yeah, dynamic weather. I uh, definitely have seen rain come and go as well. So that's that's kind of cool. Sure. Alright, so what's new? Oh, okay. So these are the higher end trucks, basically. Interesting. Um, may as well run through them. I just want to see the different vehicles. Okay, and these are kind of off-road buggies. Extra set. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I've seen one of those before. <laughs> That's an interesting choice. Uh, aerial nomads in there. Cool, cool. What's the GT? Oh, actual GT cars. Okay, that's super cool. Um, yes, if you're from the US, you've probably not seen some of these cars rally. Uh, but I've definitely seen, like in Europe, people will rally like Porsches and stuff. So, you know, that's not, not uncommon. To see Aston Martin. I've definitely seen a Lamborghini rally as well. And these are modern WRC style cars. Yeah, most of these are. Well, actually, these are rally cars. Isn't that what I chose? Okay, yeah. So they'll have more power than, than WRC. Sure. Yeah, nice, nice mix. I like the fact that there's like prototypes in here. You know, neat ideas. Uh, modern rally. 
Right, modern rally is what I'm currently doing. So in the case of like the Skoda as your starting car, this is like the first event you'll do. Uh, the Fiesta is actually a bit faster, but you know it's an A class, so you're you're equal with most of the cars. <coughs> and the um, <coughs> the Fiesta might pull ahead sometimes, but it's not that big of a difference. Uh, so I've not done this class of event either. So yeah, I've got I've got a decent ways to go. Uh, Stratos, pretty baller car. Uh, was it? Yeah, 90s rally. So this is one of the cases where I had the Peugeot, and that's a B performance, and I'm getting past by either the Subarus or the Mitsubishi Lancer. Uh, so I went, I bought the Lancer instead of the Subaru, mostly because, you know, if you've seen the news, uh, they're pulling out of the UK, which doesn't affect me, of course, but yeah, they're selling off their, their nice collection of the vehicles. Oh, the M1's in here, that's cool. RS200, always I would usually buy that, but looking at the performance. Uh, yeah, I might have to buy one of the other cars. Anyways, buying these cars, they're kind of expensive. You get enough money after a few events, it's not too bad. Uh, in terms of actual customization, there's not a whole lot going on. You can do a bit of livery stuff. You gotta... If we hop into here... And do a livery, <coughs> you do have to buy stuff. So there's different patterns that unlock at certain levels for... And the patterns vary. The patterns are similar between vehicles. Sometimes. The first one is. Two and three, not necessarily. And they unlock at different levels for different vehicles. So you can have no pattern as well. And you can put in textures uh, instead. Uh, so... Yeah, so there's different layers. Let's actually, let's, let's do none. And so I can have a texture like that. So this is the entire car. Now when you put a livery, you can see how this overlaps with the base color. So then on the livery, I can start applying different textures as well and start, you know, making some, some neat looking things. Uh, so these also unlock, they cost a little bit of money. Um, not a whole lot, so I've unlocked some of these recently, and so yeah, some of these are level related, some of them seem to be on the store, and I thought I saw, oh, well, maybe not, I could have sworn I saw a different A different requirement. Oh, maybe it's the stickers. So you can also put in stickers. Uh, you can buy them. Again, they unlock based on level. Uh, was, maybe it was here that I saw it. Oh yeah, there you go. These are reputation ones. So depending on what your sponsor is, they'll unlock stickers as you level up your ranking with a, a certain sponsor. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that. There's not, there's really not much to it. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Let's do the sponsor stuff. Uh, let's say, let's throw in the AMD maybe. Let's throw in a, I don't know. Yeah, let's throw in a Codemasters while we're at it. That's cool. So it, it's a nice way to automatically place stickers and stuff if you want to do deliveries. Uh, let's just add in the other ones. 
while we're at it. Cool. Well, that makes that easy. Uh, so yeah, if you want to combine... You can combine different colors as well, so... That's kind of how you can get to... Sort of... Making your own look. You can, you can choose various... Options and... And combine different textures and stuff. It's... It's not like... A... Forza style customization, or even the Need for Speed games I was doing, where you could stick, you know, shapes anywhere and kind of come up with your own thing. However, I'm more likely to play around with this. I think, well, I think a lot of people are more likely to play around with that, because I, I like the shape stuff, but it, you do spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, whereas with this, I don't have to spend a ton of time to get something that looks pretty decent. Um, so yeah, the Donut Media guys do a lot of the voiceovers in this game. Uh, I don't care much for them. I think it fits with the overall look and feel and what they're going for, right? They have a pretty uniform vision of like the music and the art style and, you know, those guys doing the voiceover. Everything works really well as a nice combined package, uh, so... Again, I don't care much for them, but in this instance, everything works well together, and so I can see why they, they went with them. So yeah, this is the sponsor. You start off with the Codemasters. After you finish the first season, they introduce you the other sponsor options. Uh, so you can stick with one sponsor. As you can see, I'm ranked 9 out of 15. So until I max rank the sponsor, I may as well stick with them right? Uh, once I hit rank 10, I guess I get a pro livery for a Impreza. Uh, sadly, I bought the Mitsubishi instead, but I'll probably buy it just to see. <coughs> so different sponsors pay different amounts. So I get paid a little bit more. But I think that's also has to do with the ranking. I think it does go up with the ranking. Uh, but yeah, there's the career objectives. Uh, let's see, yeah, perform podium finish in 10 events, which I think I've done. Perform 30 jumps, which I believe I've done as well. Not 100% sure. And as you jump to different ones, they have you know, different career objectives. And yeah, different bonuses. Oh yeah, I mean, you can see the bonus and whatever. Uh, with that said, there's two other careers. These are like extra DLC ones, presumably. Well, yes, they are, but I don't know how much I should have looked. Uh, and then there's Throwdowns, which I've not looked at yet. These seem to be special challenge events. Uh, so we'll give this one a quick go. Here we are, folks, another slice of off-road racing right here at the Dirt Off-Road Series. I think overall this game's pretty good. Yeah, I like the, the variety of events. Oh, these are one-on-one -on -one events, I guess. Okay. Yeah, you know, I've liked the the variety of stuff they've put in. Uh, like I said, it is very much a casual game. Uh, and that's fine. I love racing sims. I like the challenge. And even on very hard, I don't find this game particularly difficult for the most part. Um, but at the same time, I'm not putting in much effort either. So it's a great game to play while you know, kind of watching a video or... Maybe I'm just picking it up because I'm waiting for something else to happen, whatever, like... I think it's been good fun so far. But yeah, like, coming off of the Need for Speed games, you know, 
one of the things I've always complained about with those things is they just they don't grab my interest and one of the problems I've had with a lot of those Need for Speed games was that they're trying to shove this campaign story thing that's just it just sucks. You know, it's it's no fun. And so this here's an example of kind of what they should do, unless unless they're absolutely sure they've got something really cool, neat, and innovative, and you know, super polished and high quality. Why waste all the effort making something mediocre when you could just do like what they've done here and just throw a list of events, have a kind of a career progression ramp of sorts, and that's it, right? And that's kind of what I liked with the 2015 Need for Speed, which was I could just teleport to event to event, do them all one after another real quick. You get little story tidbits here and there. That a little bit like this, there's occasionally the guys will talk to you about stuff after a certain amount of events and when things happen. But you just, that's all you're doing. You're just doing events after event and, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. With that said, I feel like this game, I feel like it's a little, a little lacking. Uh, I wish it was, had a little bit more of something. You know, there's, there's some vehicles, but there's not like a huge variety of vehicles. Um, there's not a huge variety of events. Like, there's a lot of them. But like, there's not... Like I said, there's not a ton of different vehicles or different events or a lot of customization. It's just... Uh, I don't know. I'll probably keep playing, but I'm already feeling like... I've seen this once or twice already and... You know, I've played a lot with the same cars. Though now, because I'm progressing, I'm starting to get a couple more different cars show up. But by the end of this season, I feel like I'll probably have seen most of the cars already, so that's why I'm I'm kind of like a little hesitating saying, you know, I don't think Need for Speed should copy what these guys are doing, but there's a happy medium between you know, if you take the best of both games, you could probably come up with something pretty cool. Uh, and EA I think EA has fish or maybe not yet, but they're 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 in the process of acquiring code masters, so it all kind of lines up together, right? They're all These guys will all be under the same roof, or same company. Uh, so yeah, there's online stuff. Uh, playgrounds, you know, you can play around with. Uh, I was going to say customer, no, <laughs> not customer, just user created uh, maps. And there's different things you can do. Uh, none of this is loading because my internet's gone to crap, so I'm not going to hop into that. Um, yeah. Uh, we could have looked here at all the cars. I don't know why the pictures aren't loading, but... Anyways, I think that's it. I've been unlocking different things for my player card. I can throw on to there if I wanted. Uh, again, this is kind of something that shows up in multiplayer, presumably, so... You can customize this stuff, which I guess is kind of neat. Uh, I don't know. Change your nickname as well. They get you to choose one of those. I can throw stickers on my card. Or I can throw different effects. That's cool. Sure. Oh, and some of these are rep based on your sponsor. Fair enough. So say, uh, the <laughs> of course the Codemasters one has nothing. Uh, anyways, that's their five. Oh, that's funny because they get you to customize it. I got an achievement for customizing it, even though I didn't. No, I did change it. They get you to customize it when you start the game. Um, yeah, like I said, that's third five. I think it's a pretty good game overall. 
I like I said, the only complaint I have is really I wish there's a little bit more something um, in terms of like maybe playing around customizing cars or another category of cars or something. You know, like the big, not the pickup trucks, but the big, big service trucks like they have at the Dakar rallies. The, uh, I forget what they're called now. Because they used to have those and, they're, and that, those were kind of fun. They're basically like a, a semi truck, if you will. Like maybe just throwing in a, a one or two more little things like that would have been kind of what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, I, I like the levels. I like how the each of the, the the races have like a lot of stuff going on in the background. Like it's kind of crazy. I'm sure that this video either the compression is going to go to crap or the file size is going to be huge because uh, I'm encoding based on quality and not based on a certain bit rate. So uh, I shouldn't shouldn't keep rambling because otherwise this is going to take forever to upload because the file size is going to be huge. So. Uh, yeah, thankfully I got a bunch of time to upload this because it's going to probably take over 24 hours to upload. So uh, we'll end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next week with some other mystery game. I've not decided yet what I'll be playing, but I'll see you then.